Good morning, CEHO. I've got four minutes of morning left. Good morning. How's it going? Are you excited for the closing brunch? But are you cowbell excited? Our time together is coming to an end. I wanted to take a moment to recognize our closing lunch sponsors. Please join me with a round of applause for Folio, Mackey Mitchell Architects, OCM, KWK Architects, and Xfinity on campus. Just waiting to get my sponsor slides up. There you go. <clears throat> Additionally, I want to take a moment to do one last plug for our 2020 sponsors that have been scrolling on the screen. Our platinum sponsors, gold sponsors, and silver sponsors. Again, I can't over I can't overstate enough how much their contributions help offset everything we do for CEHO and our annual conference and keeping our rates low for members. Give them a big round of applause. Before we move on uh, with the rest of the program, I have some exciting updates from our business meeting yesterday. The CEHO 2020 2025 strategic plan passed and can be found on our website under our uh, documents slide. The plan was largely informed by our recent members needs assessment and by four 2019-2020 task force. CO cor corporate partner task force, CO placement, CO structure, CO website technology and communication. A big thanks to the work of these task force to the entire association as we all get ready to see CEHO into the next five years. Shilin shared great budget with information with us as we continue to be good stewards of the association's resources. It continues to highlight the years of scholarships that we've been able to give and it's nice to see that our legacy fund is working for us. Over 8,000 awarded in 2019 we have another 8,000 to be awarded in 2020. We've already awarded 5,000 for NHTI scholarships out of that money, and so we're well on our way to using all of the uh, oats from the Legacy Fund. Relay shared some exciting information about our uh, application being open until March 20th, and I know that the University of Miami is looking forward to hosting us in Coral Gables this summer. Yeah. Jim Anderson was recognized as Corporate Partner of the Year, and we gave out four resolutions of appreciation. One for the University of South Carolina for their support in RELI. One for Al Almeda Jacks, CEHO Past President 1985, with 40 years of service to Clemson University in her retirement. And then we, were, we gave out two in in memory of John Evans, University of Virginia, and Marcia Harrison Shrout, University of Kentucky. Please join me in a round of applause and appreciation for these four individuals. <laughs> Mariah Secure Regional Director shared updates, initiatives, and accomplishments from this past year, as well as some future focus areas for the organization. CEHO 22, 23, and 24 coordinators were announced. Bob Bull for CEHO 22, Megan Becker for CEHO 23, and Zach Blackman for CEHO 24. We also announced CEHO 22 will be heading to Asheville, North Carolina at the Omni Grove Park Inn. Feel free to take a picture of the of the screen for the dates. CEHO 2023 will be heading to Richmond, Virginia. <clears throat> CEHO 2024 location will be announced and is still coming into focus, but it will be announced in the coming months, so we'll be sure to get all of that out to all of you. 
Lastly, from the business meeting, please join me in congratulating our newly elected officers. President-elect, D. Allard. <laughs> Secretary, DeMarcus Merritt. And Director of State Representative, Stephanie Carter. At this time, I would like to welcome the CEO 2020 Program Chair, LaFerrin Mer Merriweather, to the stage. Good afternoon, CEO. My voice, still a thing. We're working through it. Um, so I have had the pleasure of working with an amazing committee this year um, to bring programs to CEHO. Um, the first thing for us started out with CEHO U, um, and it was a vision based on some data provided by Stephen Kluver that our mid-managers wanted something, they wanted something um, from this conference, and so we focused on the mid-level. Um, my subcommittee chairs took the vision and ran with it, and I am so excited in terms of what they produced for us. We had 137 people here for CEHO So let's give them a round of applause. We had amazing faculty and I would be remiss if I didn't thank them. Um, Steve Stauffer, Kayla Hamilton, Dr. Megan Becker, Dr. April Convalinka, Alan Blattner, and Terrence Turner. Thank you all so much for investing in our professionals. So I know you all went to some amazing presentations um, this week. We had 193 submissions, um, which made our job very difficult in terms of trying to select um, the presentations for the past week. But we had 77 program sessions. Um, and also I wanna say thank you to those alternates who said, yes, LaFerrin, if you call me, I got you. Appreciate y'all. Cause some of you, I did send an email said, hey, just joking, congratulations, I need you to present. Um, so thank you for accepting the call. Um, as we talk about programs, I always like to talk about the states who, you know, went above and beyond to make sure they were represented. So um, our first place, let's start at the third, and then go back up. So, <laughs> I know, right? Um, so our third place in terms of uh, presentation submitted, whether that be the primary presenter and the secondary presenters, was the third, it was the state of Virginia. In second place um, was the state of North Carolina, my new home. Thank you for showing out, I appreciate you all. Um, and in first place was Florida, my old home. Awesome. So before I get to talk, before we um, say who the best of CEHO was, um, I would like, if you were a presenter, if you could please stand so we can acknowledge you. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your best practices with our region. Um, and I would be remiss if I did not thank my program committee. If you are here and you are a part of the program committee for CEHO 2020, please stand up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, even when you were talking to me last week and I didn't have a voice and I know I sounded a mess and y'all was like, it's okay, LaFerrin. I appreciate you all. Thank you all so much for your work. I couldn't have done this without you. So without further ado, Liz. Liz is going to help me with our best of CEHO announcement. Everybody's excited? You should be. Hello, everyone. So why I'm up here for Best of CEHO um, is the winner of the Best of CEHO will be given $1,000 from the Akihawai Foundation um, to put towards expenses to attend ACE, because obviously if you're Best of CEHO, we want you to present it at our annual conference. So note to that from the foundation. So Best of CEHO, 
Can I get our drum roll, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not another 12-hour training day. Jalen Jones from the University of North Florida. Jalen, can you just, that's Jalen right there. I don't actually have something physically to give you, but that's her right there. Awesome. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Liz. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you all. You, I am in awe of all of your generosity this past three days. Um, you all met me with the call for the Give Me Five, so I have some final numbers. Miss Jalen, come over here and take a picture. Over there. Okay, so I wanted to give you the results of all of your generosity and hard work from this week, and then we will do the raffle that I know you all are waiting for. Um, so overall, this beautiful conference raised $22,734.35. Specifically for CEHO Legacy, we raised $9,412.50. And then of that, my fun, fancy Give Me Five campaign raised $805. So if you think about five little dollars, that's a lot of money. So thank you all very much. And so with that, just on behalf of the Akuhai Foundation, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we will be back at ACE. If any of you are going to ACE, I will see you all there. Feel free to continue to donate if maybe you didn't bring any money with you um, to this conference. We, um, there's a donation link on the foundation website that you can give all year long. Um, but thank you all for helping us achieve our goals, and thank you all for your generosity. So I got raffles. Hold on. All right, get your tickets out. If you can't find it, you probably put it in your name tag. Check your name tag. Okay. Ben, do you want to come pick some tickets for me? That way you don't blame me if you don't win. Okay, ready? So I think they're all 397. So 397, 7959. Nine. Last four, 7959. Nine. Oh, Jacob! He gets the book. Yeah. You get your book. Keep going. Oh. All right. Last four, 77. Seven. Oh, and if you won, you don't get to win again. So, 7791. Huh? No. That's all right. I'll call it anyway. If you don't notice, then I'm. All right. The next one is 7750. It's D. Allard if she's not here. She wrote her name on the back. <laughs> Is she here? She left. Oh, I'll, get, I'll send it to her. OK. All right. So this is for the $100 Amazon gift card. It is 7964. 7964. Scott. OK. This is for the $250 gift card. No pressure. I know, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Okay, 7853. Is that you? That's Ben. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Yes, he won his own ticket. And now you, you, okay. Good afternoon, everybody. We have two more awards and case studies to give out. Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, the person presenting the Academic Collaboration Award. Uh, if they would please come to the stage to present that award for me.
Good afternoon, Theo. And good afternoon to the rest of you all at Theo as well. <laughs> On the behalf of the Academic Awards and Recognition Committee, I'm pleased to present the Academic Collaboration Award. And so this is the award that's given out annually uh, that recognizes a program or a community um, or a department that um, involves collaboration between housing and academic affairs. And so I'd like to share a few excerpts from the nomination. Uh, the success and popularity of the Academic Resource Center has already led to more Academic Resource Centers being conceptualized for additional residential communities and even some satellite campuses. Through the creation of the Academic Resource Centers, the Housing Department took one giant step forward in supporting its mission to provide exceptional living opportunities for students to succeed academically. Please join me in congratulating this year's award winner, Florida State University. Patrick to come forth. I don't see him in the audience, so oh, there he is, Pat. To come forth to present the Outstanding Contributions to Research Award. Everybody. Hope everyone's doing fantastic. I am Patrick Perdome, and I am the new chair of the Research and Information Committee. Woo! I see y'all. But today, um, on behalf of the Awards and Recognition Committee, I am proud to present the Outstanding Contribution to Research Award. So, the award is uh, the award is awarded to those who are advancing the body of knowledge to the housing profession. Awarded since 2019, this award recognizes a significant contribution through the completion of an assessment oriented study and the subsequent contribution of the findings back to the CEHO membership. This year's recipient is Dylan Ruffra from Middle Tennessee State University for his State of the Tennessee Policy Benchmark Study. Congratulations. <laughs> Now Mike Jones will be coming forth to give out the case study award. Oh. Oh. One more thing Patrick has. Sorry. Additionally, for the first time in many years, the Research and Information Committee has awarded two research grants. So we just want to acknowledge you can go, if you're here, you can go ahead and stand. We don't, there's no award, you already got your check, so you're good to go. But this program provides funding to the members of CEHO to complete research studies on their home campus. The first grant has been provided to Aracelis Figueroa <laughs> woo, for the RA Burnout Study from East Carolina University. The second research grant is awarded to Paige Hicks for the Greek Affiliated Student Housing Study at the University of South Florida. So congratulations to all our winners and make sure to submit for next year. Thank you. Good afternoon, CEHO. Yes, we're call and response works great. I'm Mike Jones, I'm the outgoing chair for educational programs. And my name is Michael Rockford, I'm the incoming chair for our newly reconceptualized professional development committee. Yes, and so before we give out the case study awards, I wanna recognize our corporate partner who sponsored them, OCM. Let's give them a round of applause. And I also want to recognize all of our case study judges that took their time on Thursday, yesterday, to come and assist us. So give them a round of applause as well. Thank you. 
So we're gonna announce the different groups. Each group, if you are a third place winner, you'll receive a $25 Amazon gift card. If you're a second place winner, you'll receive a $50 gift card. And if you're first place, you'll receive a $100 gift card. Um, as we announce you and you get your round of applause, please meet us over to your left outside so we can take a group photo in front of the CEO sign, okay? And let's get going. All right, so beginning with our grad student track in third place, Sarah Williams from University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and Chance Moody from Florida A&M University. Oh, you're just gonna meet us right outside over there for a photo, yes. All right, so for second place, um, for grad student track, um, Carson Crow from the University of North Carolina, Wilmington, and David Stroud from the University of Louisville. And then in first place, Ijima Okori from the University of Louisville and Colleen Reesing from the University of Louisville. I don't know how Louisville got all those. It's crazy. <laughs> all right, and for the new professional track, in third place, we have Melee Fleming from Embry Riddle Aeronautical University, Taylor Bischoff from Emory University, and Danielle Parker from Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. All right, and in second place, Cody Grimm and Jacob Jean from George Mason University. And in first place, we have Brianna Horton from the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill and Tasha Smith from the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. Thank you. Let's go take a photo. Goodness, here we are. I'm already going to start crying. Gosh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So sorry. Had to make that wardrobe um, change because I'm happy to hand over the hat, put the new hat on, then all yours. <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit about the music that you just heard. Um, those first four notes are known by all of us Tiger fans as the greatest four notes in history and they are the notes that are played by the LSU band as they come down the hill and they are the notes that are played to start the game at LSU and we all know when we bleed purple and gold that that means something great is about to happen now <clears throat> you may wonder why I would play those four notes at the closing banquet instead of the opening well it's because we didn't put this week on for you to come have some fun and meet a few people and then go home and do nothing. This is the beginning of something really great. And so please get, take, take this, everything that you've learned home this week. Muhammad Ali said, I quote, um, service is what you do for others. The service you do for others is the rent you pay for your room on earth. And I hope that these past couple of years that I have paid a little bit back to the organization that has given so much to me um, over the past 25. Um, and maybe I've earned a little bit of space here. <laughs> um, so this week we got together with 697 of our closest friends. Um, we got to visit with 176 corporate partners. There were a total of 100, 873 people here utilizing the services. And so I want to recognize the people in the back of the room. I have a light shining on me, but is Katie back there? Wait, is she back there? 
You guys, Katie has been our um, customer service manager who has just rocked it this week. I'm sorry, she was slapping. Thank you so much to all of you who have been here and done everything for us. We appreciate you so much. And we are housing people, so we get it. Um, there is absolutely no way I could be standing up here proud of this week without my team. And so if they'll come join me on the stage. Um, you'll notice as you, uh, well, maybe just one, but you may notice that um, at the mid-year in Jacksonville, three of my host committee members felt it necessary to let me know that they would be bearing children during our term. And so we have had the pleasure of working with three babies this year on Zoom calls, at meetings, throughout this week. And let me tell you, when you're stressed out, nothing helps better than a baby laugh. So. So let me introduce you to the people who actually made this week amazing. Um, <laughs> of course, Thea, she was at the center. <clears throat> so we had a little theme going this year with, um, with our, some of our partners. So we have the two Zachs, Zach Blackman and Zach Birch, who were our AV people. So. Hopefully um, everything went smoothly and you got a lot of, you got what you needed in your program rooms and you heard everything and you get to see everything well here, so. Um, we had two Brees. We had the food, with the snack queens they like to be called. <laughs> Brie Gates and Brianna Cresswell. Um, we have the co-chairs for life. Bob Boyle and Aubrey Adams, who did registration. Our volunteer chairs were, more, were Megan Luzader and Doug Ashford. Let's see, I'm going down the line here. Um, our logistics, wow, y'all. I am not, and, and I know this, I, I know, I get it. I'm a common admin person. I'm supposed to be very um, good with details, but I am not. So I make it my, my job to hire detail people. And I don't get to hire the volunteers, but I selected some seriously good logistic people. And so thank you to Sherelle and RC. <laughs> Of course, you've met our program chair. <laughs> oh, all things guidebook, keeping it up. We had to update constantly, and he did it quickly, is our new secretary, DeMarcus. <laughs> and then, I was saving them for last, so they laughed. Oh, I'm sorry, no. How can I forget? So my very first host experience ever was in my first position at um, Carson Newman College, and there were two people that I got to co-host with, and they're standing up here with me now. There were three people that I got to co-host with, and one is out in the audience, so I'll recognize her too. That was Michelle Safright. Um, she's gone, never mind then. Um, but the other two people were our budget manager, April Convalinka. And then my boots on the ground right here in Louisville, Tom Hardy. And then helping Tom and assisting and by his side and making all things easier for me and especially giving me a laugh every day was the other local arrangements, Leslie Maxey. <laughs> Did I miss anyone? Oh my goodness. And the most important part, and there's no way our budget would have worked without it, is our corporate partners chair, Jeremy Bowersox. Oh my gosh, I introduced Thea and not Kimberly. I'm bad at this. This is why you make lists, people. This is why. Um, and all of the very cool decorations that you enjoyed this week, all of the, um, the social media that went out, the, the agendas, all, all things pretty. Kimberly Bradley. 
she's used to um, people paying attention to the baby and not her. Um, and then finally, someone not on the stage, but we'd like to bring him up, our very extra president, <laughs> Gavin Rourke. So, um, so you guys probably remember. You guys probably remember that last year Chandra told us all about Gavin and how he's a little extra. But um, what we've learned this week is sometimes he can be a little extra a lot, um, but he's always extra hard. And so, thanks, Gavin, for everything you've done for CHO. So I hope that. This week, you've been able to take home a few things from Louisville. For instance, how to pronounce Louisville. <laughs> All about the Majeska. Hopefully some new contacts, some new friends, and probably some new family. Um, if you're a first time attendee, could you stand up? Yeah. Hmm. Thank you Go so much for joining our family. We hope that you felt welcomed, and if you didn't, please come give me a big hug, because I'll make sure it happens. Um, I hope that you have made some new, family, some new family this week, that you're gonna bring home some new ideas, and most of all, I hope that your future is now in focus. I can't wait to see what Ben has in store. Don't walk too far away, Renee. I have something for you as well, and I think your host team has something for you. Um, the life of a conference coordinator um, has a, a lot of busy moments, and so does their family and those that care for them and uh, all of that. And so I also recognize my extraness in a variety of ways and I have embraced it over life because Chandra has told me to. Um, yeah, I think she has empowered me to embrace my extraness. Um, but what I will tell you about Renee is that she would say that we had a lot of phone calls and a lot of Zoom meetings and that she would leave her door open and her staff would come close it because we were very loud on the uh, Zooms. But Renee cares greatly about this association and put together an outstanding host team uh, to bring it together for everyone. And so on behalf of CEO, please accept this uh, fine moment, uh, memento to remember your time as conference coordinator. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Tom for uh, one more uh, presentation to Renee. Okay. Well, Renee alluded to it already. But we, ooh, I dropped the bell. He's, Gavin's gonna get me for that. Okay, Tom, <laughs> okay, that, no, well, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's a state thing, but that's okay. I never worked at state. But that's okay, they're, they're friends there. I wanted to take a minute to thank Renee. We have, uh, April and I have had a over 25 year relationship with her and a friendship. And you know where that started? It started with a community of friends. So we wanted to thank her on behalf of the entire host committee with the jacket, because she had been saying she wanted one. So we wanted to make sure she got one. See ho, official. And even more so, one of the things that you do as a past host, I know this, is you are exhausted after you finish this. So we have all chipped in, and we're going to make sure she goes to the spa when she gets back home. Please give it up again for Renee and the 2020 host team. It is my pleasure to welcome Ben Wicker, next year's conference coordinator, to the stage to get you excited about CEHO 2021.
I got a new hat today. Um, so again, can we please hear it for Renee uh, and her host committee one more time for this amazing conference that they put together? Okay, thanks. Uh, it really has been an amazing experience. Uh, my name is Ben Wicker, and I am the Associate Director of Residence Education at Georgia Southern University in Statesboro, Georgia. Um, however, my capacity here uh, is to serve as the conference coordinator for the 2021 CEHO Conference in Charleston, South Carolina. So I've been a CEHO member for a number of years now, and many of you know me from, my, from either my time in Tennessee or my couple of stints here in the state of Georgia. What many of you don't know about me is that I was actually born and lived in South Carolina for a number of years. And so being able to be the conference coordinator for a conference host in South Carolina is especially um, dear for me. Um, when I was growing up in school, I got to learn about the history of this really special state, um, about the importance of Fort Sumter, uh, of Charleston, and all the historic cities of President Andrew Jackson, of Civil War heroes, um, and, and civil rights heroes like Harriet Tubman, of the importance of the Palmetto and the Crescent on the blue flag. Uh, and all that stuff was uh, instilled a sense of pride in me um, being a native of uh, South Kakalaki. Um, so I was born the year that the Clemson Tigers won their first national championship in 1981. And so my blood does run orange. Um, I've been a Clemson Tiger fan ever since. And while my history in South Carolina is not really as significant as the uh, history of our host city, I have no less pride in encouraging all of you to visit the his this historically unique and beautiful city in my native state. So please take a few minutes to take in the sights and sounds of Charleston. So my host committee, the CEHO 2021 host committee is so very proud and excited to welcome you all from February 23rd to 26th to Charleston Area Convention Center in the Embassy Suites in beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. We encourage you to take the stuff that's on the table that we've left for you there, um, our, our cool stickers, uh, which we all um, willingly and
acknowledged, uh, has an extra R in February, you know, it's just to give you a little extra R as you're getting ready for that conference. Uh, but we encourage you to take those home, uh, put them on your laptops, on your tablets, on your water bottles, post those to social media with hashtag CHO21 uh, and get excited for next year. If you've never had a Charleston Chew, I know a lot of you are probably like, hey, what are these things? Uh, these things are delicious. They're like chocolate covered nougat, so you think like a Snickers bar without the caramel and the peanuts. They really are delicious and they'll be a nice little uh, after brunch snack for you. Um, we also want to uh, give away our basket that we had at our table, so we appreciate everybody who stopped by this week and, and visited us and getting ready. Uh, I've already got it. Uh, this was drawn by uh, our now president, Nairi Tryman, um, after or before lunch today. So um, we are glad to present this wonderful basket full of wonderful Charleston paraphernalia to uh, Emily Higgum of James Madison University. Are you still here? Okay, come see us. Come see us afterwards. Okay. All right. Um, awesome. So our theme for next year, as you can see here, is anchored by history, creating new legacies. Um, so as you're thinking about programs and getting in the mindset for next year's conference, think about how our past has provided the foundation for us all. We as professionals, our institutions, our students, for good or bad, for hard or easy. Regardless, time continues to march on. It is up to us to look to those lessons learned from our past as we create new legacies, traditions, and futures. We look forward to seeing you all in Charleston next February for CHO 2021. Anchor by History, Creating New Legacies. Thank you. And it is now my pleasure to introduce Gavin again. I'm going to ring his bell. So before I get started, I want to remind all of you that Louisville and the stage gets a little dusty and that my friend Rick will help me get it, get through it with a nice woo if it gets a little too dusty for me to keep it going. There are many people to thank. I will start by thanking all of you, the association. We are what makes CEHO such an extraordinary volunteer organization that is committed to the growth of the housing profession in the Southeast. It has been an honor to serve you as your president this past year. I sincerely thank Renee and her entire 2020 host team. The task of hosting a conference like this in CEHO doesn't happen without many hours of hard work, and it is clear that Renee and her entire team have poured a great deal of love into the 2020 conference. And they've helped bring all of us into a future in focus. I've had the pleasure to work at five CEHO institutions over the years. These five universities have helped mold me into the housing professional that stands before you today. And now you know my love of cowbells. I've interacted and learned from many outstanding professionals, colleagues, and friends throughout the years. <clears throat> it's not dusty yet. These friends and colleagues have helped teach me, help, help me grow, help challenge me, and help support me. I'd be remiss if I did not also mention another group. I am not a member of the WOHOs, but I can tell you that I've been raised, taught, mentored, and developed by very many of these extraordinary women. Woo! <laughs> uh. I should have put a mark where I like thought it would happen, and I wasn't sure it was that one, but. Um, I'm especially grateful to the past presidents of CEHO. This group is a very special group and has provided words of encouragement to me throughout my time uh, as president. 
We had a caucus meeting last night in my room in which somebody said, I heard you got into an argument with Chandra. And I said, Chandra and I don't get into arguments. We have discussions that are very loud. <laughs> and so these five past presidents are in the room, and it was like all five past presidents. Ten, um, members five of us there. Steve Stauffer, the most seasoned of the past presidents with 10 years of experience, once we got done, said, whatever you decide, just write it down for somebody. <laughs> Kathy asked us questions of like, well, what do we want to do, not what have we done? And it was the most Kathy Hobgood like statement that I just like marked in my memory. But it's those kind of moments that I'm looking forward to joining this uh, illustrious group. There are a few pickles in the room, and their support continues to remind me that even during the tough times of our day, today positions, one can find support through camaraderie with others. I'd like to especially thank Virginia Commonwealth University and the Residential Life and Housing Department. I'm also fortunate to have had the support of my supervisor, Dr. Kurt Irwin, and of Senior Vice Provost, Dr. Chuck Clink. That was a Halloween photo in which I dressed like him. Uh, <laughs> and I tricked him because his wife told me what slacks he was wearing. And then I took a photo and a video of it. And he was not as amused as I thought he would be. <laughs> but the department got a lot of fun out of that day. And it was really good when you had to have meetings with both of us, uh, both of us in the afternoon after that. And I'm sitting there and look like him. Uh, but Kurt has been great, as well as our Senior Vice Provost, Dr. Chuck Kling. All of these VCU members on the screen provided me that extra push to be successful in my role. I'd be remiss if I did not highlight my gratitude and appreciation to Jenna Marsland, Executive Administrative Assistant at VCU. Yeah. And all those on the host team that got emails and calendar invites. Uh, she helped provide extraordinary support for me this past year, and I know that many of you have interacted with her for Zoom meetings, emails, and general follow-up. Chandra mentioned a year ago, and I think people have remembered it, that I can be a bit extra. And I do hope that extra has been for the betterment of CEHO. I want to give a special recognition for those rolling off of the Executive Board and Governing Council. Our executive board members rolling off are Chandra Myrick, Andy Petters, Krista Bourne, Shannon Staten, and Jacob McAbee. Please give them a round of applause. <laughs> All five of you have left big shoes to fill for, uh, for the next uh, executive board. I'm grateful to the 2019-2020 CO Executive Board, Governing Council, and Host Committee. These in individuals have shown me the true power of what a group of dedicated volunteers can accomplish. I know through the past year, all of you have gotten more emails from me than you would ever like to count. I know you at least got 52 um, and have had hours of Zoom meetings. I believe together we have helped make CO a stronger organization and you all are an important part of my CO family and CO story for years to come. I'm now preparing for a little bit more Ric Flair Woo! As uh, I want to give some heartfelt appreciation to my beautiful wife, Jacqueline. <laughs> Being CEO president is extremely rewarding, but it comes with some late nights and some uh, long weekends and some gotcha do's and gonna do that later and come back and let's talk about that one and. Uh, sorry, I missed that, and I'll be home for dinner at 9. And, um, but uh, she continues to be a strong reminder to me uh, that we all have a variety of loved ones that help support and empower us to chase our dreams. So thank you so much. I'll stop looking at her now before I have to get another Ric Flair photo. Um, Jacqueline and I, I look forward to spending our upcoming May 15th year anniversary abroad together. Chandra will say that you have earned that trip and more for putting, me, uh, putting up with me for these past 15 years. And here's to another hundred. I was at CEHO 2009 in Birmingham, Alabama, in which I heard a quote about retired past president Deb Boykin when she won the Founders Award. It was something to the effect of Deb had said she did not have a regular doctorate, but instead her doctorate was in the work of CEHO. That, 
That quote really connected with me, and I decided that I too would work to get a doctorate in the work of CEHO. I knew that I wanted to spend my development hours and involvement with this fine association. I believe that you can get back what you give, and that I can tell I'm uh, still trying to pay back all that CEHO has given me. Thank you for entrusting me. <coughs> Come on, Rick. <coughs> Thank you all for entrusting me to serve the association, and as they say in the South, I hope I done you proud. I had the pleasure to serve in a presidential trio with Chandra Myrick and Nairi. I will miss our calls, and I will mainly miss the looks that Chandra gave to both Nairi and I when we were on Zoom meetings, and she was like, we are not talking about anything that we had listed to talk about. I had the wonderful experience to follow Chandra as president, and now I get to pass this off to my friend and colleague, Nairi. Many of you remember that Nairi and I both went to Mississippi State, and I know that he's gonna be happy with his also cowbell. I know that our great organization will continue to enhance under his leadership and that he will help, thank you. Yeah. I got like a half a paragraph. <laughs> I might take him to the table though, but thank you, sir. Um, let's give the Omni a round of applause again. That was pretty. I know that uh, our great organization under Nairi's leadership will continue to enhance and grow and be strong, that our newly approved strategic plan um, will come to life under him. As a fellow bull bulldog, I always felt that the cowbell was a fitting way for me to also pass off the reins. Please help me welcome to the stage Nairi Tryman Sr. to give his incoming president's remark. Thank you all, CEO. Before I let Gavin off the hook and let him off stage, uh, we just want to present a token of appreciation to him uh, with this plaque that just says, thank you, basically, uh, for serving in the role as president. And one of the things that is a tradition is handing off the mini crow mag, uh, because he'll no longer get the, the large one to have in his office to take pictures with, to walk around Richmond with, to do stuff like that. So uh, I want to present him with those. I'm gonna see if I can get my laptop started because my notes are on there. I don't kill trees like Gavin. <laughs> I've known him 20 years. I can joke with him like that. Baragani, I greet you all in the Swahili dialect. That means, what's the news? It's traditionally reserved for times of Kwanzaa, uh, but on this next to last day of Black History Month, uh, I thought it appropriate uh, to, to greet you all in that manner. Uh, I am going to try to get through uh, my remarks. I don't think I'm gonna need the Ric Flair, but you never know what'll happen. Um, so the first thing I wanna do uh, is say, uh, give another round of applause uh, to our host team. Uh, they did a phenomenal job. Uh, they have toiled and labored, uh, and when I say labored, like it's indeed a labor of love. 
when, when I was on the host committee, we started meeting 18 months before the conference um, and had ongoing meetings, and I'm sure they've probably been on somewhat of the same schedule, so. technical difficulty there. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I want to do, whoo, <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to give one uh, to my partner. Uh, she allows me to travel, uh, to come to these things, uh, and I've got an eight-year-old uh, and a two-and-a-half-year-old. Um, and so I've already gotten the text message today, what time does your flight land? <laughs> uh, but she does the work of two people when I'm away, uh, and I love her dearly. Uh, she's my counselor, uh, she's my support, and she is my queen. Um, so you can see, hmm. <laughs> woo! <laughs> you can see some pictures of us throughout the years here. Uh, when we first got married, and up until like last year, so that's awesome. She said I was going to do this. Where is he? He's over there. It's his fault. Um, but no, she, she, she is my everything. Um, and so y'all tell her I said that when y'all see her. Make sure you share the video with her if we can. Um, I also want to give thanks uh, to the team at the University of Alabama who has allowed me to partake in this opportunity uh, to develop professionally, uh, to take the next step in my professional journey. Uh, I am appreciative of them. It's not that bad, <laughs> but I appreciate you. Uh, so specifically to my supervisor, Dr. Matt Kirch, uh, for his leadership and again for him allowing uh, me to do this. Uh, so some of you all may be wondering why I have these clothes on. And if we go to the next slide, okay. So uh, this summer, well, this past year, uh, my Aunt Mamie died. Uh, I know that's a sad way to talk about clothes, right? Um, but in her death, I found some paperwork. Uh, my mother's maiden name is McKinney, M-C-K-I-N-N-E-Y. Uh, and the McKinney lineage has been traced back to Ghana. Uh, so the clothing that I am wearing uh, was bought by my father when he traveled to Ghana. Uh, and so this, for me, brings it full circle um, in showing the, uh, these clothes as paying homage to my ancestors, uh, paying homage to the ones who have come before, before us. Um, and as we heard Alvin Sturdivant say, uh, it reminds us of diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, and that there are many different stories, um, and that we've got to be aware of all those stories uh, and be intentional about what we're doing when we're doing the work of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's also not lost on me uh, that I stand here as only the second African-American male uh, to hold the position of CEO president. Uh, the first was Leon McClinton in 2007 to 2008. Uh, so I'm excited for this position and excited to see what will happen. I kind of just forgot all about my slides. Uh, but went back, went too far. Uh, so this came up on my Facebook feed this morning as I was doing some final touches. Uh, Kimberly let me down with my bow tie on this one. You can see it's uh, dipped to the left slightly. Uh, but at this point, I had no idea what I had gotten myself into. Um, and as you can see from the, the caption from the last year, uh, I was humbled uh, to serve in this capacity. Uh, and the great Muhammad Ali said, because we're in Louisville, we've got to have a Muhammad Ali quote, right? Uh, he who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. For me, this was a risk. Uh, since I was running against Michelle Saferight and Katrina, I thought it was a pretty safe risk, because uh, I did not think that I would win. Uh, and I thought that it'd be one of them, and I could say, well, I tried. Uh, and, and it wouldn't happen. Uh, but sometimes, Things happen for a reason. Um, and I'll be very honest with you, uh, I suffer from imposter syndrome. I, sometimes I ask myself the questions, am I gifted enough? Am I talented enough? And do I have what it takes to be president? 
But this past year has affirmed for me that I do. Um, you all. As I've sat on calls with uh, Gavin and Chan and others from the executive board, uh, it's been a reminder that I do have what it takes um, and that I'm going to work hard to make sure that I do that. Um, but your well wishes and your pledges of support as you stop me in the hallways or in other places or little notes that you've sent have meant the world to me. Uh, and I have y'all written down all on the list and everybody who said that they were going to help me, I, I'll be calling you. So. Uh, but no, I, I certainly do appreciate it. Uh, and so I just remain humbled um, and thankful that you all saw something in me uh, that you thought worthy of being your next CEO president. Uh, I also want to give thanks. I'm learning the, the timing of this thing, so it should change in a second. Or maybe one more time. Uh, I also want to give thanks to my mother uh, and to my father, who have been instrumental in my development. Here it goes. Okay. Struggles over here. Okay, there we go. Let me push it a little harder. Thanks. Um, so my mother on the left uh, and my father on the right, uh, who instilled in me uh, a value system, who instilled in me uh, a hard work ethic, um, and that's what I bring into to this position. Uh, and so it's my hope that I make them proud, um, and it'll be also my hope that I make you all proud. So here's the other part of why I do what I do. Uh, you heard me say I had an eight-year-old and a two-year-old. Well, that's them. Now, Yuri Jr. and Jelani, uh, and I want to make them proud when they look at me uh, and say, what did my daddy do? Uh, did he do anything worthy of, of repeating or anything that uh, would make me excited to be like him? Um, and when I go home and I get to hold and, and embrace them tonight, they'll be asleep because I don't get back to like midnight. Uh, but when I get back and, and get to hold and embrace them, uh, that's my sweet spot. That's exactly where I want to be. Uh, and so I'm excited uh, to do this position for them to show them that they can do it um, and to show them that there is a road map uh, for them. I told Jenny I had a throwback, uh, so I want to thank, in this picture, uh, Dr. Ann Bailey, uh, who gave me a chance some almost 20 years ago. Uh, I started out as a, <laughs> a person who had zero experience in housing, and she put me in a graduate hall director role, and you can imagine how that could have turned out. Uh, but when I was able to get into that space and able to see the impact that I had on our young people, uh, it's what got the hook, the student affairs hook in me. Uh, and so this was literally, I had been on the job like four days, I think, at this point. I didn't even know how to check anybody in, so I had to learn that from my RAs. And they were already halfway through training, so. Um, it was fun times. It was a, a very steep learning curve, uh, but one that I'm grateful for. Uh, and then I'm grateful to Chan uh, and to Gavin. Uh, this is a picture from Summer eBoard last year. Uh, they have answered my questions. They have put up with me. Uh, I'm not as bad as Gavin. I'm put that out there. Uh, <laughs> but they put up with me uh, and helped me as, as I've learned. Uh, and so I'm ever thankful for them. Uh, I'll ever reflect fondly on the time that we spent together on our many, many, many uh, Zoom calls and regular calls and uh, time that we spent here and Chan being an hour late when we were supposed to be here at three. But <laughs> Love you, Chan. Uh, but they've had their time, and now it's my turn uh, to be the president. And so as we pivot uh, and look towards the future, another Ali quote, and I think, Renee, you stole this one wherever you're at. Yeah. Uh, Y'all already heard it, so you just can see it on screen. Um, I'm hoping over this year uh, that I'll be able to make a mansion for myself. Because uh, service to others is the rent you pay for your time here on earth. And obviously, Muhammad Ali said that. Uh, so I want 
uh, to work, 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 and I want to get to it ASAP. I will take some time to breathe. I won't be like, quite like Gavin. Um, and the next day, trying to get it all done. That was the advice that he gave me, so I'll, I'll put that out there. I think we're okay. Uh, but as we look to the future, and I pivot from the personal stuff, uh, this is going to be our guide for uh, my year uh, and for the next five years. Uh, and so there are several items in the organization that need our attention. Uh, and I want to highlight just a few of them and kind of uh, some of my way forward. Uh, so CEO's role in career placement uh, is certainly one of them. Um, I want to give a shout out to Kobe England and her committee as they did a fabulous job with this this year. Uh, but now that we know that SPE is not coming back, uh, CEO has avoided the field. Uh, and so what does that look like as we go full speed ahead uh, with creating a placement, creating opportunities for uh, people to create that CEHO love. Uh, the governing council heard me say it this year, uh, uh, this morning, I'm sorry. Uh, many of the connections that people have uh, come from when they were hall directors and the new professionals in the field. You heard Renee talk about it in April and the connection they made some 20 plus years ago. Uh, and so how are we cultivating our new and graduate staff uh, to have those relationships. Um, if we have a great placement, I think people can look back fondly and say, I got my first job at CEHO. And because of that, I am moving into a, a role and I'm into this field. And so we need to figure out how we continue with placement. Uh, and so I will probably convene the same task force that did the first leg of the work uh, to do a second victory lap uh, and to finish that work uh, since we know that that's a, a way that we need to be going now. Um, I think it's also imperative that professionals such as myself uh, and other, as we like to call them, seasoned people in the room uh, are providing leadership and mentorship. Uh, tell the, the new, new folks about what it means to be in CEHO. But I'll also caution you, new folks, uh, when someone reaches out to you, you should respond. Uh, if you don't, that may be the only reach out that you get. Um, and as you're thinking about what that next job or what that next step is, um, you might see that person that reached out to you on the other side of the table. Um, and I tell you, they, they, they just may remember that. Not saying that folks hold grudges, um, but as we look at, again, taking time out of busy schedules uh, and being there for folks, please don't take that for granted. Um, and please don't take the family atmosphere that we have uh, in CEHO for granted. Uh, because it's not necessarily that way in other regions. One of my duties as president-elect, as we talk about new professionals, uh, is to preside over the awards process. Um, and through this process, one of the most submitted award is Outstanding Graduate Student um, and uh, New Professional of the Year. Um, and so as I look and was able to read through many of those awards applications. Uh, I was very, very, very excited. Uh, and I feel like our profession is in good hands. Um, and I think moving forward, we'll be in a good place. And so the last couple things, and uh, I won't bother you much longer, uh, but I am looking at uh, renewal of our website slash updating. Uh, Brian has done a great job with it. Uh, but we all, was, we were sitting around um, with some of the facilities folks talking about technology um, and talking about what we put into our buildings um, and how we put it in one year and 18 months later, we got to put new switches in or we got to put an additional WAP or there's not a, enough uh, bandwidth. Uh, and so, <coughs> excuse me, as we look at our website, the same can hold true uh, if we're not being cognizant of, of what the new standards are. Uh, we know that our students, many of us are getting rid of cable because our students stream. I mean, as they continue to pull that bandwidth, we've got to think about, again, how do we address them? Um, and we also heard Alvin say at our keynote, uh, we have issues of access and affordability for our students, uh, but what do we have for our professional staff who are not resourced as well? Are they able to come to those conferences? Uh, and so under 3.1, uh, of the strategic plan, increasing retention of campus housing professionals. 
um, and, and increasing our range and our reach are all important things that we've got to figure out uh, in the next iteration how we do that. So, as you heard me say, I'll be reaching out to you all for various task forces and uh, ways to do this work. Uh, I realize that I can't do it all by myself, um, and I'm excited to have you all go along on the journey with me. Um, I also want to give a special shout out uh, to all my facilities folks out there. Um, facilities is a good thing to consider. Um, it is a very rewarding place to be. Um, and I know res life is kind of like the, ooh, fancy, and you look at us. Um, but if you're looking at long term at being a senior housing officer, you're going to need some type of facilities knowledge. Uh, and so even though some of those facilities positions may not be as sexy, if you will, um, consider them and consider how you're expanding your knowledge. If nothing else, talk to your facilities people. I promise you they're not like scary people. Have a conversation with them. Ask them about their jobs. Ask them what they do. Uh, and your interest may peak. Uh, so consider that. And so as I get ready to close out, oh, too fast, uh, I want to give a shout out uh, to my buddy Ben Wicker. Um, as you saw Renee and Gavin uh, talk about uh, their relationship and how that has blossomed over the year, uh, I'm looking forward to have more conversations with Ben. Uh, I'm looking forward to the journey that's going to be CEHO 2021. Um, and as we uh, look toward Charleston, a city that was a major slave port with over 40% of all slaves in the United States coming through that port, uh, may we hold our theme of anchor by history, creating new legacies up and think about how we turn that legacy uh, and how we turn what was a dark time in history into a positive. So may our new legacy be one of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thank you, CEHO. I love you all, and I'm excited to serve in this capacity for the next year. And with that, I officially call this meeting of CEHO adjourned. <laughs>